Hello everyone. Today we're going to go ahead and take you through kind of a beginner's or introduction routine to using the 9090. Uh, it's going to be quick, it's going to be brief, so if you have any questions just reach out. Uh, first and foremost, the 9090 is a advanced position, so it's definitely a progression. Most people shouldn't be able to just get right into it, which is really why I'm making this video for you. So first place to start would be doing the cars routine and especially doing hip cars if you do five hip cars really well before you get in this you'll probably sit in it better anyway so working in that order would really work well um, i'll leave the uh, link below for the full routine so next off there's a million ways to regress it or, or regress it sorry what we're going to do is use yoga blocks to kind of show you that way so if i was having a lot of trouble with my front hip I could go ahead and elevate this, and now I'm in less external rotation. Now I could take it even a step further because most people are gonna really struggle big time with IR in the back hip. So what I can do is if I sit on this block, now I'm in less hip abduction, so my knee is lower, it's not as high anymore, taking some of the demand off my hip, and I'm able to actually let that sit and stay a little bit more straight up. In terms of what are we looking for and for progression wise, what we'd like to see is the ability to keep this almost straight up or perpendicular to the ground so that we're as tall as can be. Both are in 90 degrees, a strict 90, and you're able to really pull the toes and dorsal flex the ankles and just stay up tall. Another thing that often is kind of misunderstood is the idea that you'd always have to be holding your hands up or that you wouldn't be allowed to use your hands. Especially when we're trying to expand range of motion, it's not a balance test. We actually want to have more stability in order to create more force. In order to get more stability, we can use the yoga blocks to create leverage and really be able to get over or position ourselves better through the block. So don't think that that's something that you need to avoid. I strongly suggest using it no matter what level you're at. You can always take a rep or a, a kinetic stretch rep or anything else and do it with no hands. Now, what we're gonna do is walk you through something which is really light pails. So we're gonna go and create an isometric contraction. There's a lot of different ways to go about this. So we can think about our level one or our first progression within this routine as being just 30% pushing into the ground. Now, what we can think about also is constant communication. So if in your mind you're at 30% of your max, you should be staying there. Oftentimes when people start off with the kin stretch and isometric training, they'll end up not being able to maintain that 30. So you go from 10 to 35 to 40, back down to 15, and it's very all over the place because that communication with that capsule and that tissue is not really strong enough yet. So as we build it, have your intent match your output. Now, from there, we can go to 100%, so we can just go as hard as we can, really push them down. Think of that as a progression from our level one. Now. First, what we're gonna do is kind of give you a visual so that you can understand what the contractions actually look like and to a certain extent feel. So, as I'm doing hip rotation, my front hip is in 90 degrees. So think that I want my foot to be able to get to here so that my hip is sitting nice and even on the ground. So when I do your pails for the front hip, when you push into the ground, you're gonna hear me say something like, be very heavy on your ankle, be very heavy on your shin. Make sure that you're thinking about rotation. Well, this is what rotation looks like. So picture the grounds on the outside of my ankle closer to the camera. I'm gonna push through that down there. So there's a really good visual to get you guys to understand that. Now, what it isn't is this, right? So I'm not just pushing my knee down and getting me to go there, because then I would miss the rotation of the hip component, which is most of, most of the time, especially for what I'm saying, is what we're getting after. Now we can think about the trail leg in a similar way. So the trail leg would be here, 90 degrees, right? When I tell you to scoot through the ground or be heavy on your foot in that manner, it's gonna look like this. So see, as I push through the ground, I'm doing this, not just this. Yes, you're gonna push your knee down, I'll explain in detail later, but I want you to really be able to visualize what I mean when I say scooping through the ground like that to push down. So let's start off with our front. When we get into our front, we're gonna try to think about getting as long as possible in the spine, okay? For most people, just starting here and starting to push them to the ground is a great start. If you can, try to think about pulling your left butt cheek back 
or really tilting your pelvis, increasing the crease here and getting your chest or your sternum over your shin. As you go forward, we should start to feel a really deep stretch in the outside of the hip here. But when I say outside, I mean just where it is, but that doesn't mean that it's not a deep stretch. You should really feel it in the capsule. Think about where the femur actually goes into the socket. That's around the area where I want you to feel it really deep in there. So now we're here and we're gonna go ahead and do 30 seconds, pushing through the ground. Remember, I'm using my whole entire body to an extent at 30% but I'm really trying to be heavy on my foot because my hip is creating tension to push down through my foot. So make sure you're really thinking about that rotational aspect. And if you were over it, you would stay there. If you're straight up, you would stay here. After we get 30 seconds there, we can turn and start to work on the back hip. Now with our back hip, in order to regress it further, or even just to another degree within using the blocks, what we can do is lean away from it. So most people are gonna to try to get to here, which is the furthest progression really. But what I want you guys to think about is first level one here, then maybe we go to here, then maybe we go to here, but you're able to slowly start working your way to straight up and even getting closer to it. When we start to work our way towards the back hip and even getting to reach towards the back foot, especially this is what we want. So there's an X on my thigh, it stays facing there, or even thinking about it going to the ground. And this is gonna rotate towards the ground. When I say this, you can think about it as your butt, your pelvis, whatever you want. But what's happening is this going that way, relative to this staying there, is creating more rotation, which is gonna light up that sensation of the stretch that you should feel here. It does feel different out to here and out to here. Everybody's gonna feel a little bit different, but we're essentially looking for some line of tension in here through the groin or through anterior capsule through here. So for this one, no matter where you are, you're going to that scooping thing, right? So we're thinking about being heavy on our foot. The hip is what's tensioning first. The tension irradiates down through here. Shin starts pushing down real hard and the foot starts to push down really hard through tensioning, 30% at least from the hip. Find out where you are along the spectrum. If you want to go to 100, progressively overload every single time you do it. Then think about really scooping through the ground and creating that tension using your hip. So there, I just did one round on the front, one round on the back, 30 seconds each. Now I can transition. Don't think that you need to go no hands. Remember, for the purpose of this, we're really trying to kind of be in a beginner kind of state. The further back I lean, the easier it is. I can also do a rep where I keep my belly button forward as long as I can, and then I allow myself to open all the way up. We can get to the bear sit for a quick second. Hands here or here is fine too. The further back, the easier. And then I can just end up in the 90-90 transitioning on the other side. So I can just rotate right into that. And now we're here again. 30 seconds here, 30 seconds here. Doesn't matter which one you do first. I would even maybe suggest doing the back one first if you're more limited there. And then from there, we can go ahead and transition again. Remember, progressive overload, add yourself a nice little round. That way you're getting better at it every single time, whether it's increasing tension, duration, or even just rounds. So, Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully it didn't, you don't have any questions. If you do, don't hesitate to reach out either in the comments or email me personally. Uh, this is a really good sample and kind of intro to really what we're doing in our level one kin stretch program. So, you know, it's really the, the best product that we've put out to date without a doubt. Um, the, the feedback that we've gotten on it, whether it's the before and afters or even testimonials or just the people just feeling so much better has really made our day and uh, we'd love to have you join the group. So if you have any questions about that, there's another link below and uh, hope to see you guys next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.